happy birthday as well. You always find the latest courtyard. And in solution, Kate. In out of the box. Hello and welcome to Radio Waves by Todd Herbert. If you enjoy reviews, comparisons, band scans of new and classic portable radios, then make sure to subscribe and tap the bell icon so you don't miss any of my most awesome videos. In front of us, we have the new Midland ER10VP. This is an emergency alert AM FM weather radio. I picked this up off Amazon for total of $19.99. And I thought it'd be a cool addition to my emergency radio collection. So let's check this out. Midland. Flashlight, weather alerts, AMFM radio, and got the NOAA tag right there. Awesome. Picture of the radio. This is cool. Three AA batteries included. Not bad for 20 bucks. Model number. Stick around that side. Okay. Getting prepped. This is definitely a cool prep radio. We'll talk about that. All right. They're going out camping. Over half a century, Midland has been trusted to keep you and your loved ones safe, providing reliable emergency preparedness options. Awesome. Okay, a little rundown on the radio. Okay, there you go. Flashlight, high, low. Yeah, it's got three modes we'll talk about. And uh, there you go, in the box. All right, so let's go get it open. Now, mine was taped, of course, and I opened it so I could test it. Let's pull everything out. Okay, I loaded mine up with batteries. It looks ready to go, so there's the radio. I'm going to set that aside and see what else we get inside the box there. Okay, there's a little white box, and I think there's a manual. There we go. And the box is empty. Okay, that goes aside. Let's see what we have here. In the white box, I'm guessing, is the batteries. This actually is a cool option to store the batteries separate from the radio. Uh, and you don't have to worry about um, if they leak, they're inside the box here. So, cool option if you're going to buy one of these and put it away for storage. Um, here we go. So, these are Midland branded batteries. And, uh, yeah, they're alkalines, I believe. Pretty simple. There you go. You get three of them in the box because it runs on three AA batteries. And like I say, yeah, this would be a cool option. You could always swap these out with those Energizer Lithiums. And uh, then you have a long-term storage option. You could pack this away anywhere. In that box, that box is actually a pretty slim design, and you're good to go whenever you need a weather radio. Ah, it's supposed to go in there, but you get the idea. Next, we have the instructions. All right, so ER10. I don't know why they took the VP off on here, but there you go. What the VP means, I don't know. Maybe you Midland guys can tell me. So here is the manual. I'm just going to flip it here and show you um, how everything works. There you go. In case I missed something. It's all right there for you forever. And posterity on YouTube. Hey, if you lose your manual, you just come to my video and you check out this manual. There you go. So showing you how to operate the radio. This is very simple. It's a very simple radio. I mean, you don't get much for 20 bucks, but you get enough, I'll tell you. And again, we'll go over what you get, which is pretty neat. Okay, you can get a menu, a few options in there. And on the back here, customer service and their... Located right there, Missouri. Nice. And there you are. Okay, cool. So let's get to the radio. Boom. Front and center. We're going to zoom on down. So the new ER10VP. Uh, I reviewed the ER50, which you're going to see in a second for comparison. And just a cool radio overall. So let's uh, do some dimensions on this radio. Uh, we're five inches across, three inches tall, and a depth of one and a quarter inches. It's very uh, portable. It's very uh, easy to stow away, uh, like in a backpack. Um, definitely uh, in a, say, what do you call it, uh, shelter-in-place bag, <clears throat> or you can put it in your bug-out bag. Um, I would put it, like I said, put it in the box, original box, because this box is actually pretty, pretty thin box. And put your batteries in the bottom there, and you just cut this top piece off. And you're good to go. Um, you get yourself a nice little uh, backup radio. And that's what this is, is, a backup radio. I probably wouldn't use this as my main radio, but as a backup option, it's not bad. Oh, fuzzies on my table. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, pretty good setup. So let's uh, go ahead and do some size comparison on that. I gave you the dimensions. Bring this back up. And I have its big brother. I just reviewed this. This is the ER50. Um, so differences, you can see right away, size is a huge difference. And, of course, cost. Uh, this costs about 40 bucks. This is only 20 
This is a no-brainer if you're just prepping on the cheap and you want to have something in multiple places. You could have, like, say, you know, a couple of these radios versus one of these radios. Um, it's not a bad thing. And you just keep extra AA batteries. I mean, it's sweet. I love that. And it's, it runs forever. So, but there's for size. You know, of course, options. The light on this is going to be better on the, the ER50. Okay, straight up. Uh, ER50 has a bigger display, bigger buttons. Uh, bigger speaker, but they sound, they're both tinny sounding. Uh, the ER50 does have a solar panel, which is more passive. It does have the dynamo on the back. And of course, this runs on a rechargeable 18650. If that ever failed, you didn't have an extra one, you're out of luck. Here, if your double A's fail, hopefully you have double A's and something else in the house you can scavenge. So that's why this is such a great prepper radio. All right, so let's go ahead and zoom it back on it. Well, no, I got more to show you. Hold on. I got a, another weather alert radio, CC Pocket. This is 65 bucks <laughs> if you want that option. Um, it's portable. It's AM, FM, weather alert. Um, it doesn't have a flashlight. Uh, yeah, it's not red. <laughs> but uh, it has a little red lettering there. But there you go for size. And, of course, last but not least, we have Iron Man. He's the man with the master plan. He can spin it like no one can. There you are. So we're going to go ahead and put this on a different background, I think. This red on red is really hard to see. So we're going to go ahead and just drop down some cardboard paper I got here. And we're going to lower this. Here we are. Okay, so I get a little up close and personal. We'll talk about features of the new ER10 VP. So, of course, on the left-hand side, you have your light source. It's just a simple LED, as you can see there. It's not one of those fancy ones. Looks like some kind of chrome reflector there. Um, I'll show you this. We'll probably turn the lights off and demo the light, but it's pretty pretty basic. You got a low, you got a medium or high setting, and then you got an SOS. So you do have that. So you have three modes, and I'm actuating that with a little rubber button switch on top there. Okay. Uh, so yeah, it's got this cool design where it looks like these little rivets holding it together there, little hex screws. Kind of neat. Uh, we got NOAA weather radio, Midland across the top in white. Here we have the clock. Uh, this is pretty neat. You can set the clock to 12 hour or 24 hour. You see it's showing PM. The, over here is the volume level indicator. And then we have the battery uh, status indicator there. Uh, we got some buttons here similar to the ER50. We got a power and band select button, volume up and down, tuning up and down, weather alert, and of course your uh, menu to access a few options. Here we have a little tiny speaker, it measures about an inch and a quarter, it's pretty small and titty sounding, but this is an emergency radio, you're not going to be using it as your daily driver. <laughs> if you are, um, I feel your pain already. <laughs> Definitely. On the bottom it has little feet there, so it does stand, kind of cool. Right inside we got a wrist strap. Uh, here we have a headphone jack. Uh, yeah, let's pop this open. It's kind of a pain to get this jacket back in place. So yeah, it's a metal sleeve. It looks nice. Um, but the headphone experience, uh, it's pretty bad. Um, I would not recommend using headphones with this radio because it's that bad. And putting this rubber jacket, it, it's a hassle and a half. Get on there, buddy. Okay, I did it. Um, so let's talk about it. Volume's a bit too loud on the lowest setting. Uh, this radio doesn't get very quiet. It just It's either a little too loud or off. So it's not great for headphones. Now, if you have different set of headphones where you can control the volume on them, it'd probably be fine. Uh, so just expect mostly mids. I didn't notice any lows, and it was a very flat, neutral tone. So yeah, I don't expect uh, a whole lot there, um, but good for like just listening to the weather radio itself. Uh, but that's what you use that for. Okay, top of the radio, we have the switch, of course, for the light. You have to click it all three times to go through this modes. On the top here, we also have a standard uh, antenna. Now, this antenna extends out to a whopping, call it, eight and three quarter inches. Okay, it's a pretty short antenna, but it actually did very well on FM and NOAA, and I'll talk to you about that. Here we have a tag, has a serial number, uh, ER10, made in China, FCC ruling there. Okay, and then behind the battery compartment, this is actually kind of nice how this door opens up, not bad. Do you like that? It's not captured, but it's there. Uh, it's three AA batteries. Now I put it in my own. You can put those Midland, Midland ones that came with it in here. Little uh, hint here. This is These are actually very difficult to remove. Like right now on camera, there's no way I can pop these batteries out. They are just not going to come out. I mean, without me hurting myself. 
Okay, so I have to actually put a little screwdriver in there and pop it out. Now, if you don't want to hurt your radio, you could use like something plastic or a small thin butter knife might work, you know, for something around the house. To put the batteries in, you put the positive in first and then snap the back end, the negative side in. Okay, so positive first, negative side. It's, it is rather difficult uh, if, once you figure that out. Didn't say any instructions how to put the batteries in, but you had to kind of play around. Just letting you know, yeah, I'm turning the radio on in a moment, so hang in there. These batteries are a pain to take out. Now, if you get one out, then the other two just pop out with your finger. No big deal. I recommend recommend maybe a piece of a silk ribbon that comes around uh, up here, and you can hold both ends. You know, hold both ends and just pop one battery loose, usually over here by the negative side, pop, and then you got the other two, no problem. So that's something to think about. They should have put the ribbon in there, but they did not. So just something I would show. So there we are. Let's talk about FM reception, then we'll turn this on, go through the bands, do a little audio check. So FM reception report. This scored a good to very good score, which is amazing. Um, analog radios typically, uh, where's my analog radio? I always got my GE or here, here you go. This guy here gets about uh, 48 stations on FM. Um, it's actually pretty decent rating. It's I call it okay to good. Um, this found, oh, I hit the weather alert. <laughs> it's flashing WX, nice. Um, this one actually found 71 stations with that little tiny antenna. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> I kept finding faint stations. Uh, it was not uh, a tropo day or e-skipping day, so that was nice. I checked for that. Um, so this thing was absolutely amazing. I just couldn't believe it. Uh, so yeah, it gets a good to very good score, which is like three and a half stars. And FM selectivity was a good, a solid good, because I was finding all those faint stations in between strong stations. Just could not believe it. Um, absolute great FM radio. Uh, the NOAA weather reception, I found six stations out of seven. Again, that's above average. Average is around four to five. So for me to pick up six stations with that little antenna, again, this thing is just great for a backup emergency radio. That's just absolutely fabulous. Um, so there you go. And then we're going to turn this on, but I also want to mention the daytime AM band. We're going to go through the bands, but the daytime AM band, it's just good for locals only, similar to the ER50. Um, so just expect local programming only. I could not pick up much on this thing. Got to the top of the band and it was pretty quiet. So we'll see how it does in the evening here too. We'll do a little evening band scan. As you can tell, it's 11 p.m. Uh, so there you go. So let's go ahead and turn this on. And uh, oh, press and hold it. And then we'll go ahead and tune to the FM band. Now I'm playing some music with my C Crane FM transmitter and my frequency 92.9. Some royalty free music. So when the radio is on, see, you have it, does, it just goes to quiet and then on. That's as low as it gets. So in an emergency, that's okay. But if you're trying to listen to something at low volume, you're going to be a little upset. <laughs> you just can't get low enough. You can cover it. <laughs> but this thing gets super loud. That's, I'm not even trying to go up the bar. There's like five bars, and this is already loud. <laughs> so FM frequency we're on. There's megahertz. And of course, uh, better level and volume. Now flashes the clock back and forth. So we're going to go ahead and just leave this here, do a little demo of audio. And uh, you get to hear how tinny this is. And then I uh, will go ahead and cruise the bands.
turn that off and we'll do some band scanning nice oh yeah rather tinny sounding but hey it's an emergency radio you're really only listening to it for the weather normally uh, you're usually not jamming out <laughs> with this little dude um you can hear it has a little bit of a hiss to it uh, but it's pretty low level uh so yeah so let's go ahead and um go ahead and extend an antenna uh and we'll do a noah scan see what we can pick up on channels there Put extend that little dude out can move some stuff so I don't smack anything, but this antenna is pretty small. I mean, it's yeah, put it on camera almost. Okay, so let's go ahead and change the band. Okay, this is the one near me. 74. It was cloudy with a temperature of 79 at Waukegan and 80 at Madison, Wisconsin. Once again, at O'Hare, it was 78 under partly cloudy skies. Here is the forecast for the Chicago metropolitan area. Rest of tonight. Mostly clear late in the evening. Thunderstorms after midnight. Channel 7. Lows in the lower to mid 70s. South winds 5 to 10 miles per hour in the evening becoming. In West Bend it was cloudy. Channel 1. The temperature was 72. At Madison it was cloudy. Just pick it up channel two. Channel 5, so that's 6. That's just, just great for an emergency uh, weather radio. So if you want to go into weather alert mode, tap this, and it's in it. And you can, I believe, have that, yep, on all your bands. So you could have it active. So if a weather uh, alert comes through, weather tones, it'll actually go right to the weather band and start playing the radio, or the uh, band you're on, the channel you're on. So that's pretty cool. So um, also, I want to show you, let's turn it off. Uh, menu, you just press and hold. Uh, you can switch from 12 hour to 24 hour clock. Okay, pretty basic setup there. Leave it on 12 hour, most people will. Um, except for us, you know, military guys with our shortwave radios. <laughs> you set the time, uh, hours, minutes. And then we have frequency or channel. So you can set the uh, weather, so it would be channels one through seven, if that's what you know, or frequencies. Um, I leave it on frequencies. There you are. Pretty simple setup menu. That's it. There's no backlight on the LCD. That's to save power, I'm sure. So let's go ahead and uh, I guess see what's on the FM band. I don't know what I'm going to pick up. You know what I'm going to do? I have a little clip-on antenna. Uh, it's always good to invest in a little wire, uh, even for a little radio like this. Let me see if I can get it without knocking things over. I got it buried under stuff on my desk. 
It's a little wire I had with a shortwave radio. You can pick them up for like 12 bucks. I'm just going to clip it on the end of my radio here and use it for FM. So there you go like that. Uh, since I'm downstairs in the subfloor basement and we'll see what we can pick up. So let's go turn that up. Now tuning is just to tap it. I'm going to tap to the bottom because you can't hold it. <laughs> and then we'll seek with it and see what it finds. Okay, we're at the bottom of the band. Just barely picking up a low power station there. came and they went in and there was these three teenage boys it's flag so give me other details that I mean she's she doesn't want to cut top Okay, sometimes it skip stuff, so you can hear faint stations. 5.9 FM. Chicago Public Health Commissioner Dr. Allison Arwoody says coronavirus case. So it'll find a lot. There should be something on 107 now. Let's see. Oh, barely. There you go, 1077. That's when I saw my funk number. 51, same as my age. Suddenly got it, finally got Okay, so you get the idea. It does very well on FM. It's just absolutely amazing. See, I'm got the wire off now. Just holding it, little dude. This is a pretty faint station, too, 1077. A lot of my radios can't pick it up. So there we go. So go to the uh, AM band. Now, like I told you, it's only good for locals. I don't know what we'll pick up in the evening. So it has an internal antenna. That's why I'm not going to extend a little antenna on the back, for those who know. Um, those who don't know, uh, yeah, it's a horizontal uh, orientation here. It's a little ferrite bar with a coil winding, so it helps pick up the AM frequency better. As you can see, it went to AM. Right now, 11-12, Central Daylight Time, PM, uh, and I'm near Chicago, Illinois. So let's just see if we can pick up something real quick. by the then chief of the Capitol Police has been fired for, uh, for his trouble. WIND Chicago, local. By Speaker Pelosi and Mayor Bowser when they were appealed to enforcement, which could easily have been provided. Lead over. Milwaukee, uh, 620, WTMJ. Uh, list over here. Okay, 
Oh, that's nice. Can't hover on the music, but 630 is uh, CFCO, Chatham, Ontario. 310 miles, 6,000 watts. So in the evening, you'll be able to pick up some farther stations. During the day, there's no way. <laughs> uh, so it's good, you know, I'm surprised, this little dude. Okay, so that surprised me to hear that. Let's turn that back up. Okay, country music on 650. You know what this is? WSM, Nashville, Tennessee, 434 miles. I'm just going to bring this up a little bit. Yeah, wow, this is fun. We're almost to the end of the video. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, dead up. Tune it up. Okay, this is 670 on 660. Again, selectivity not the best on strong stations. No, 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 no. I didn't ask you about... I, I, I kind of split that up. I didn't ask you about her decision. Okay, 670 to score to VCR, Chicago, home of the Cubs. Yes. What I just tried to explain, and I understand if, if it... Seven hundred would usually be WLW. Don't hear it. Martin and John, which is a profound piece uh, of music. Yes, yes, absolutely, absolutely. And uh, seven twenty WGN Chicago. To say about uh, Dion DiMucci, but uh, Little Diane probably wouldn't be high on the list, though. However, no. This little speaker, actually, the AM radio does sound good. There's many people who haven't heard this, and you know, it's it's once, once is enough. <laughs> Okay, so that is Zoomer Radio out of Toronto, Ontario. That's um, 460 miles, CFZM, Zoomer Radio. Uh, pretty easy to get the signal because it goes right over the Great Lakes, so there's no obstructions. This would be Georgia if we could get it. It will work closely with them to share trends and hate with marginalized and vulnerable people. Here's WGR, Detroit, Michigan, 270 miles. Frequently targets a paint group and it's... Seeing <laughs> many stretch. Maybe throw out the first pitch. The trade deadline's Friday. Rumor mill keeps spinning. Bryant says it's just exhausting. Some bleed over from 780 on 770 there. This is WBBM, Chicago. 5-3 over the Royals. Eloy's first of the year after his return from injury. The Bears are ready for training. Stuffer's ready too. <laughs> Eight hundred here, CKLW, Windsor, Ontario, two hundred and seventy miles. Again, over the Great Lakes. This has been all this has been uh, this fungal infection has been spreading now for the last. WHAS, Louisville, Kentucky, um, three hundred miles. Uh, this is uh, Ground Zero. <laughs> CJBC, Toronto, Ontario. Okay, so we're just picking up a hint right here. Barely heard the call letters. <laughs> it did say WCBS uh, 880. So this is New York, New York, 750 miles. As you can tell, it's pretty uh, low. So that's as far as we're gonna go. I mean, we can just press and hold this. See if it can pick up anything else. It being in the evening, it should. Tory management solutions, safety service Local. products, and more. Granger is the team behind. Des Moines, nice. Keep going. Are they ever reported as looking sickly looking or for bus frail looking? Yeah, you do occasionally. WTAM Cleveland, Ohio. St. Louis. KMOX. About 300 miles. Oh, WRVA, Richmond, Virginia. 665 miles. 
So you get the idea. I'm going to stop it here. Go ahead and turn this off. All right, so the Midland ER10 VP, is it a winner for 20 bucks? Um, maybe. I mean, this is definitely a backup radio. This is what I would have packed away as backup only, not my main radio. My main radio might be something like this. The CC Skywave, um, AM, FM, weather alert, airband, shortwave. It has it all pretty much. You can get the single sideband version, of course, and even have more. But staying under 100 bucks, you can still get something nice like this. This is what I would carry. Um and have as my multi-use radio, everyday use. Uh, sounds great on headphones too, by the way. And is awesome on AM band. You could also pick up, <clears throat> excuse me, a radio like this with a uh, single sideband as a main tuner, or you could pick up uh, inexpensive radio for around 40 bucks that has, does a lot, is the uh, Ciodon R108 or the Radio Wow. Uh, as you can see, FM, medium wave, short wave. It doesn't have any NOAA weather alerts, but, uh, you know, if you need a basic radio, this would be your backup weather radio. So they kind of go hand in hand. <clears throat> Main radio and backup. So this is a maybe purchase at $19.99. It's actually not bad for the money. For 20 bucks, you get a set of batteries, you get the radio, and you're good to go. Um, so, yeah, it gets a, a maybe recommendation. So in between, it depends on the person and their needs. Um, again, a great prep radio you can put away and forget about, and it's there when you need it because it's AA batteries. Awesome. All right, guys, give me a big like if you like the video. Two, if you like Midland Radios, want to see more, subscribe, bell icon, you know the deal. And three, comment below what you think about the ER10VP. Is it a radio for you or not? Let me know. All right, guys, take care, and we'll see you in my next video.